guys prefer if I make videos that are a bit more comedic, where I, you know, show some steady faces like this. <laughs> but uh, today, I'm going to be completely um, serious. Like, there's no comedy in this. This is just a straight up video response because um, this isn't like your typical I need feminism video. It's nothing like that. This is more or less a video about how transgenders need feminism. And I know that some of my transgender fans are watching this and curious on what this person has to say. So, that being said, let's begin. Hi, I'm Sean Fay, and this is Sean This Way, and in this video, I'm going to be discussing how trans people can and should be feminist. Okay, I might as well make one joke. But after this, this is completely serious. So, you're Sean this way, huh? Well, okay, I'm Sean, you're going to be wrong. Get it? Get it? <laughs> but, before I begin, I'm going to tell you what this video will not do. It will not ask the question, who is a real woman? There have always been a few loud voices within the feminist movement trying to discredit the authenticity of trans people. And some feminists out there, some of them which are very well known, have made anti-male quotes. Going as far as to say that men are nothing more than walking dildos for women's pleasure. And that's about it. You can tell that this video contains a bunch of no true Scoffman fallacies just from the very 30 seconds from the, of this video. In the words of that important feminist thinker, Regina George from the 2004 high school comedy Mean Girls, Why are you so obsessed with me? I know, right? It's so embarrassing. At the core of any feminist theory are two important concepts, patriarchy and misogyny. The YouTubers, including myself, have debunked feminist theory. I've... We already destroyed the existence of the patriarchy. We, we no longer live in a patriarch society. So feminist theory as it is already has failed. And we've seen on how feminists, you know, act. It's not about for equality. It's more or less just asking for more and more rights or just simply asking to not be offended. <laughs> I could go on and on about how feminist theory fails, but that's going to be for a future video. So for now, let me just focus on you, sir, or madam, or whatever gender you are. Patriarchy is the ordering and structure of society so that most social, economic, and sexual power is in the hands of men. We already debunked the existence of the patriarchy. Me, WarCorp666, Dr. Random McCann, Sagar Gakkad, Skeptor, The Amazing Atheist, Mr. Epsion, just to name a few. And if you look at the link in the description, there's a there's a humongous list on the amount of disadvantages men have in society. For example, men are sentenced longer in prison time for the exact same crime of that of women. Men are more likely to get raped in prison. Men are more likely to commit suicide, although women are more likely to attempt to commit suicide. Um, what else? Men have no say of, of becoming a parent whatsoever. You know, if a woman decides to go through the abortion, the man has no say in it. And if the woman wants to, you know, give birth to the child, then the father has no choice but to go with it. And guess what? The money comes out of his pocket. And if he doesn't pay, well, guess what? They're, he's off to fucking jail. Yeah, we live in such a wonderful society. And misogyny is a way that allows patriarchy to flourish by creating a culture of contempt for women and girls. No idea on what feminists define on what exactly is misogyny now. Pretty much anything we do is misogynistic. On a personal level, this is what will lead many women to feminism. Their personal experiences of sexism and a desire to change things. I assume it was just a trend because, you know, if you're not a feminist, then you're pretty much not cool. You're anti-equal. For many women, 
and some trans men, they will have experienced this from birth, having been raised as girls. Of course, any feminism worth a damn recognises that these concepts, patriarchy and misogyny, are not experienced by all women in the same way. As the black feminist Bell Hooks says in her book, Ain't I a Woman? In a capitalist, racist, imperialist state, there is no one social status women share as a collective group. Father McCart pretty much destroyed Bell Hooks' book. Links in the description. This is also true of transgender women. The trans writer Julius Serrano popularized the term trans misogyny to describe this. Trans misogyny is like regular sexism, but intensified. It judges trans women not just as women, but as men who appear to have given up being male in order to be female. I find that rather ridiculous and also a bit transphobic. What about females who transition into males? What about them? What, do they automatically gain some sort of special shield by the men? You know, they receive a welcoming card from the men's club like, yeah, welcome to the club. I don't really get it. Patriarchy and misogyny tell us that being female is such an undesirable state, no person in their right mind would choose it. You're really expecting me to believe that society is this anti-women to the point where if a man transitions to a woman, that person is treated even more, uh, more like shit than a regular woman. I mean, where's the evidence for that? Show me proof where trans women are treated worse than trans men. Because I'm not gonna lie, there is some form of um, transphobic, s s transphobic ideology within certain people, but I don't see it happening. Provide some fucking proof. And so trans women are scorned for this choice too. For example, all too many women have experienced street catcalling. It is a form of sexual power play designed to invade women's space and make them feel unsafe. This argument again, the, the whole catcalling argument has been debunked. All it is is fucking words. And hell, there are some women that like being catcalled. some odd reason you must tell men that they should never catcall ever and what's defined as catcalling it's pretty much you know just walking to a woman just saying hello how are you doing we can't even approach a woman without being called a fucking misogynist thanks to feminists like yourself if this is done to a trans woman, she will feel all the same emotions as any other woman, but with the added fear that if those catcalling her discover she is trans, they will feel deceived by her, and seeing her as both a pathetic man and a deceptive woman at once may be even more violent. Only alone is not enough to identify someone being either a, tr a female or a trans woman. You will never know. It's not exactly, you know, written on our fucking foreheads that we're fucking transgender! Duh! So your entire argument pretty much crumbles on itself. The only way you would know for sure that someone is transitioning is if they started to transition. It's that fucking simple! Two months ago, James Dixon pled guilty to the murder of 21-year-old trans woman Islan Nettles in Harlem, New York. In his court testimony, he said that he was tricked by a transgender. Once Nettles' trans identity became apparent to him, she ceased to be a human being in his eyes, and he beat her into a coma. That's unfortunate, which is why it's better to come out of the closet sooner rather than later. This is trans misogyny in its deadliest form, but like all types of sexism, it works in subtler, more mundane ways to restrict the freedom of all those who are not considered men under patriarchy. You can simply turn this around and use your own logic and say that trans men also suffer f from trans misandry. Because uh, feminists have, have this tendency of believing in toxic masculinity. So, if a man was to find out that their friend happens to be a trans man, then that trans man is going to be ridiculed even more than a very feminine man. 
because not only is that man, you know, that trans man is not living up to male expectations, but also this trans man will never be a full man. So you get the picture. So clearly, the end of patriarchy and misogyny would mean the liberation of trans women as well as cis women. But what are the practical feminist politics we should all engage in together? And what are some of the ways in which mainstream feminism still misunderstands the role of trans women? Right-wing conservatives say it is an unholy interference with nature or a lifestyle choice that people should be made to pay for themselves. And the extreme right is pretty much fucked up. That's why I'm a liberal, but not to the point where I'm, you know, the part of the regressive left, like most feminists are. But, you know, I'm becoming more and more sympathetic to conservatives, to the point where I see conservatives more liberal than the liberals themselves. Funding is cut for it. If it's restricted, people will take desperate measures to seek it anyway. If it is allowed, it can only be allowed with the agreement of several doctors and only under certain conditions. What am I describing? Well, I could be describing women's access to free, legal and safe abortion. But equally, I could be discussing trans people's access to gender-related health care, both major issues to those they concern. Abortion could potentially affect half the world's population, and trans health care is a rarer issue. But both concern the bodily autonomy and mental well-being of those involved. I have no problem if a woman wants to abort a child. The thing is, is that the man, the one who impregnated her, has no say in it whatsoever. Unless the person is a goddamn rapist, which then he loses all rights to being a father, then the father pretty much has no say in it whatsoever on being a parent or not. So you should probably address that as well. And as for transgender care, I'm also in support of that as well. A shared feminism recognizes that without our bodily freedom and mental well-being, we are not free. So. Healthcare is a core goal in a shared, trans-inclusive feminism. I think that would be a priority, but instead what feminists focus on, on things like, on how we need female emojis, on how we need to ban the word bossy. We don't need feminism when f feminists have this fucked up priority list. I mean, really, emojis are an issue. Fucking hell. It's a complete myth, but trans women are often represented as being merely obsessed with our own bodies and our own politics. In fact, trans people's politics are as urgent and important as any other in the feminist movement. I never even heard of a, that stereotype. And also, once again, feminists have pretty much fucked up priorities. They're going to be waiting a very long time before they reach to your needs. Trans people may arrive at their politics differently. Who doesn't? But we need feminism and other feminisms need us too. No. You do not need feminism, nor do feminism need you. If feminists really care about transgender politics, then maybe you should tell them that the very first thing they should focus on is transgender politics rather than getting offended of mere things like, you know, fucking video games. You know, violent video games that are, you know, being too overly violent. <laughs> yes, that's what feminists are focusing on. Whether cis or trans, I hope you've got something out of this video. I've been Sean Fay, but let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Tweet me at Sean Fay, use the hashtag Sean this way, and keep up to date with all of our content at Navara Media. Well, Sean, I expect a video response. Until then, I am the atheist gamer and peace the game out. I mean, keep gaming on, whatever.